Hello and welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic where today we're going to take a look at a different sort of Sudoku. Um, now this puzzle uh, appeared in the US Sudoku qualifier from last weekend which is the, the exam used to select um, one of the team members for the US Sudoku team who will compete in the World Championship and it was won by none other than Jason Sofranieri who we did a video on just the other day focusing on his extraordinary Kakuru skills. Um, definitely recommend you take a look at that if you've never seen speed solving of Kakuru. It's extremely intimidating and uh, very very impressive. Um, but Jason won the US qualifier on the Sudoku so he's going to be participating for the US um, and uh, the set of puzzles um, created uh, as part of the test was uh, they were designed by Wei Hua Huang who is a uh, former world puzzle champion many times over very uh, an extraordinary extraordinary solver and an extraordinary setter so I'm expecting this to be a very interesting puzzle I've selected it because it's a bit different we haven't looked at an irregular Sudoku before um, so without further ado let's have a look at it. Now the rules are similar to normal Sudoku in the sense that every uh, row and column need to contain the numbers 1 to 9 but the extra or the additional oddity with these puzzles are that the regions aren't only 3x3 three three regions. You can see there are four 3x3 three three regions here but there are five other regions that are definitely not 3x3. Three three. Uh, they have um, very strange configurations as a cross shape here in the middle and there's these outer areas which are uh, sort of all symmetric going around the edge but each one of the, these areas also needs to contain the numbers from 1 to 9. So how do we approach a puzzle like this? Well uh, <laughs> the, the best tip I can give you for this sort of puzzle is that it's important to use the geometry of the uh, of the puzzle as well as the sort of normal scanning of rows and columns what do I mean by geometry well what I mean is let's have a look at uh, this area here at the bottom which contains a five now it may be obvious to some of you but the, I'm going to shade it actually because I think it makes it clearer if we look at this cell and these two cells here. I've shaded them in. Whatever numbers end up being in this cell, this cell and this cell, they have to be identical to these numbers here over here on this side because we can see, I think, I think it should be obvious to everybody that as we know that there's going to be the numbers 1 to 9 in this odd shaped box here whichever of these numbers is pushed up outside of row 9 those numbers have to be replaced if you like in these three cells here in order for the puzzle to work in order for there to just be the numbers 1 to 9 in here so this feature we're going to use again and again I'd imagine in trying to solve this so let's see how we can use this fact and I think you know that should be very obvious as well that there's a very um, straightforward first number here which is we can use this one if we scan across with the one you can see that we obviously we need to put, put a one in this odd shaped set of nine boxes and it can't go anywhere in the bottom row can't actually go in row eight either because of the one here so it can't go here or here therefore this cell here this has to be a one and then we can use the same sort of principle if we scan up the grid in column 9 we can't we need we need to place a 9 again in this odd shaped box and it can't go in column 9 anymore and it can't go in column 8 because of this one so in fact we're able to place another one up here and let's try and do the same thing again in this other shape around the edge and you can see it's very cleverly designed the puzzle so we can now this cell here has to contain a 1. Now what else can we do with this? Um, we can now see 
using the central, this cross-shaped box in the middle, that a one is going to be pushed into row five of the grid. It's going to appear here, here, here. Can't appear here because of this one. Now, can we use that fact somehow? I'm going to use little pencil marks just as I would uh, in solving normal Sudoku. So where I place pencil marks, that's going to mean there's only two positions in any region that can contain the number that I pencil mark. So that's why I'm able to write ones into this box here like that. Um, now, where else can we go? Ah, yeah, well, we can place a one into this cell just by simple Sudoku rules. And that means we can place a one into those two positions in this 3x3 three three box. Now we have a sort of X-wing shape of ones um, in the grid here, which means that there's nowhere else in these two columns that can contain a one. Um, now, is that useful? Well, it might be. So we can now rule out this cell from containing a one and this cell from containing a one. So I think the one in this cross-shaped box can only appear in this cell. Uh, it can't appear in this cell actually now. Uh, yeah, so in fact this has to be a one, which is a nice spot. Um, now where? Uh, how about nines? Let's have a quick look at nines. There seems to be nines all over the place. So this 3x3 three three box and the nines, you can see we can't place a nine in the top part of it and we can't place a nine in the second row of it and this nine here prevents us from placing it in this position. So this cell here must be a nine. And now that this bottom box now is, or this bottom odd shape around the perimeter has very few cells now that can contain a nine you can see that the 9 has to be in the bottom row, but I think it can only go either here or here. And this is one of the things that you have to do when you find this sort of this sort of situation arising. We've now got to use that over on this box. It rules out a 9 in either of these two positions can't place a 9 here because of this 9 and we can't place a 9 in either of the next two rows either because of the, these two 9's so all of that means that there is a 9 in one of these two positions and all of that affects row 5 of the grid and forces the 9's in this cross shaped box in the middle to be in column 5 but column 5 is restricted as well. We can't place a 9 here, and we can't place a 9 here, and we can't place a 9 here. So the 9 has to be in this position, which allows us to resolve where it goes in the bottom row. So that's all quite handy. That simple Sudoku rules allow us to place a 9 here. And now I'm trying to use the fact that we have so many 9s in the grid to do something over on the right hand side. The nines, or the left hand side, sorry, the nines can go in one of those two positions. Okay, so that's not too bad now. Hmm. But where can we go next? <laughs> well, we can start writing in some pencil marks, which is always a good thing to do, I think, if you have the opportunity. Three. Oh, threes. If we look at threes in this box here, we can't place them in either of either here or the here or here. So this has to be a three, and that means we can actually place the five beneath it. And then if we can place the four and the two. That's all reasonably useful. We've now got a lot of uh, information in several rows of the grid. 
now can we use it somehow to make quick progress these two cells has to be a seven uh, now one of these two cells has to be a four and now it's getting quite restricted where we can place a four in the central cross it can't appear here it can't appear here it can't appear here it can't appear here so it's either here or here I think and that means that the four in this bottom area again is being pushed all the way over onto this side of the grid it's in one of these two positions and that's really nice now because we can then use this fact on this other perimeter area and that means that the 4 has to either be here or here I think in this perimeter area and that's nice now because this cell can't contain a 7 so in column 8 we've actually got a funny 4-7 combination there and there and this is forced to be a 2 which allows us to make a few more pencil marks and here we're able to use the geometry of the grid again the fact that there is a 7 in either this position or this position allows us to write in to this bottom area that there is a 7 in one of these two positions because it's exactly the same logic as the shaded squares at the bottom of the grid whatever has been pushed up into these three cells this cell, this cell and this cell must be replaced if you like by this cell, this cell and this cell they are going to be identical numbers so the fact we knew there was a 7 in one of these two positions allows us to write a 7 into one of these two positions and we now have uh, a reasonable amount of information that the fact that there is a 4 or a 7 here means that one of these two cells must be a 4 or a 7 we can't quite use that fact yet to, to deduce another number okay, pencil mark 6 is over here and again 6 is in the central cross now are becoming very restricted we can't have a 6 here we can't have a 6 here, can't have a 6 here, a 6 here could we have one there? I think we could, so there's a, there's a possibility this is a 6 there's a possibility this is a 6 not a terribly useful deduction I think but with these puzzles you have to make use of all the information just in case it's going to prove to be the helpful bit of information you need okay so if we look at row 2 of the grid now we have to place a 5, 6 and a 7 this cell here is forced to be a 5 obviously this cell and this cell are now 6 and 7 in some order. I'm now looking at column 4 just to see if there's anything we can do with that. 2, 6 and 8 need to go into those positions there and you can see that this position cannot be a 6, this position cannot be a 6, therefore this has to be a 6. And now this funny area down here is getting very restricted. We still need to place 2, 3 and 8 into it I think now is there anything we can conclude from that we conclude that this or this is a 2 and you can see we have a 2 here so in fact that allows us to place a 2 into that position and now again we need to use this 2 here immediately over on the this next perimeter area you can see we can't now have a 2 in either of these positions 
can't have a 2 here. We could have a 2 here. No 2 here. This could be a 2. This can't be a 2 because of this 2. So we have 2's in those two positions. Again, let's use it up here. No 2, no 2, no 2, no 2. This could be a 2. This can't be a 2, and I think this can be a 2, unfortunately. And again, scanning across, no 2, no 2, no 2. This could be a 2. This could be a 2, and this could be a 2. I think there are three possible 2s there. We're able to write 3 and 8 double into these positions. So we now know down here that one of these cells will be a 4 or a 7 and the other will be a 3 or an 8 because of this. We've worked out this is a 3 or an 8 and that actually, believe it or not, is helpful. Because now look, we have a 3 and a 3 in columns 2 and 3 already. Therefore neither of these cells can contain a 3. Now if that's true, it's not possible for this to be a 3 because that would need to shift a 3 into one of these positions. So one of these cells is in fact an 8. We don't know which one, but let's write it in because that will be helpful because now this has to be a 3 and this is an 8, which means this is a 3 and this is a 4, which means this is a 4 and this is an 8. Now this has to be a 6. Let's cross out some of the pencil marks we no longer have any use for. You see the central cross now is, is very nice because of this 2-8 combination here. That forces this cell and this cell to be 2-8 in the central cross. which means this cell cannot be a 2 anymore. This cell has to be a 2. And what have we got left to place in the central crop? We've got 3 and 7, I think, are the only numbers we haven't placed. That forces this to be a 7 and this to be a 3, which means this is a 7, this is a 6, and this is a 1. And this is a 1, and this is a 2, and this is an 8. Um, so all of a sudden the puzzle is starting to yield its secrets to us. This is an 8, and this is a 5. Which means we can place the 8 here. Remember this cell has to be a 4 or a 7 because of this parameter here. Can't still see which one of those is going to be correct. But this now is forced to be an 8, and this is forced to be a 2, and this is forced to be a 2, and this is forced to be a 5. I think we're nearly there, but we just have to finish it off. So this cell here now has to contain 6, I think. This has to be a 2. And now we still need to place a 7 in row 2. And the 7 can't be here because of this funny combination of 4, 7 that we have here. So in fact this would have to be a 7. And this would have to be a 6. Now, the fact that this is a 7, we might be able to use, again using our geometry condition. Because we know that the three cells here are going to be the same as this cell and this cell and this cell. So we know one of these cells has to be an 8. I think it could be either way around at the moment still. One of those is an 8. And one of these has to be a 7. Can this be a 7? Yes. Can this be a 7? Annoyingly, yes. We 
we need to place 3, 5, 8 in column 9. You can see we have a 5 and an 8 here, so this is forced to be a 3. And this is forced to be a 5, and this is forced to be an 8. And that's going to, I think, be extremely helpful. Now we can place the 8 over here. So again, we use the geometry of the grid. We have 7, 8, and 1 as the outliers in this area. So 7, 8, and 1 must appear in these three cells. You can see we have a 1 and an 8 already, so this would have to be the 7. Therefore, this is a 4. So this is 7 and 9 in some order. That can only be this way around. Therefore, this is a 9. Therefore, this has to be a 4. And we're looking to place 5 and 6 down the right-hand side of the grid. That's a 5. And if everything's worked out correctly, that can still be a 6. Now, this being a 6, we get 4, 7, 8. So we can see immediately this has to be a 4. We already have a 7 and an 8. So the geometry condition again, we have now 1, 4, 8 must appear as, as in these three cells. We have a 1, an 8, this is the 4, and this is the 7. So this was an example of how to do an irregular Sudoku. Um, beautiful puzzle. Something a bit different today. It uses very different technique, I think, um, to normal Sudoku. We might do another of these in due course. Anyway, thank you for watching. And we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.